Hey guys. So I want to talk to you guys today a bit about meditation and mindfulness. I want to share my number one strategy that I use for myself and I, t I teach my clients um, how to meditate in the most effective way to use your time most effectively and get the most profound results with meditation and mindfulness. But first off, I want to share with you guys or talk to you guys a bit about mindfulness, meditation, what it is and why it's beneficial for you. And then I will teach you guys my strategy. So mindfulness and meditation are basically one and the same. They're very similar. They're about achieving a present moment awareness. So present moment awareness is about just being in the here and now in the present moment. So the mind really is a mechanism that exists in the past and in the future. And the body is where we experience the present moment. So it's about making that journey from head down into heart and into, into our body where we can start to experience physical sensation. And as we follow those sensations without having to label them with the mental mechanism of our mind, we start to tap into this present moment awareness, which really is where love and joy and peace and all of these, these experiences of beingness uh, exist. So it's our job to find stillness of mind, to become the master of our mind, because a lot of people experience life through being the slave to their mind. Their mind is always running rampant and it's it's like the mind controls us and we don't control the mind. So meditation mindfulness is about taking the reins back from your mind and being able to be present with yourself without having constant mental chatter. So how we do this is we find time in our day to sit down and become the witness of everything that's happening in our being instead of like the, the, the mind has the ability to think and the mind has the ability to watch itself think and it's in that in that sense it's not really the the thing that's watching the mind thing isn't actually the mind it's our consciousness it's our it's the the seat of awareness that sits underneath the thoughts as they go they go you know cyclical and rampant in our in our experience we're able to sit underneath them and we're able to just kind of observe and, and watch these these thoughts take place so we call it the thinker and we call it the watcher so when you're tuning into mindfulness and meditation you're actually increasing the and and, strength, and strengthening the the watcher part of your consciousness and this is it really is like a mental muscle it's a, we have to train it we have to work at it it's like going to the gym and, and and training a muscle right you have to work at it and you have to get good at it so one of the one of the my favorite ways of doing this is something i call 1 to 10 10 to 1 so what ends up happening is I, I, I've been instructed so many different by different spiritual teachers and different um, coaches that I've had that, that, you know, give me strategies on these. And I've tried a lot of them. And one of them is just return to breath, things like that. But I just found that when I was in this, this openness, which is just focusing on your breath, you're not actually, um, for me, it didn't feel like I was doing enough to keep my mind tamed. So I, I developed this, this technique that it's, basically counting from one to 10 and then down from 10 to one. The reason why we do that and we don't just count is because I've tried counting and I've, you know, all the way from one to 400 or whatever it is in 20 minutes. And, uh, what ends up happening is I have the experience where my mind is counting on autopilot, but my mind is also off drifting and chattering and doing its thing. So that defeats the purpose because the whole point of, of mindfulness or meditation is to bring yourself back into that present moment. So you need to, to focus on something and you need to keep your focus on that thing, right? It's called one pointed concentration. So we're, we're, we're concentrating our attention on one thing and one thing only. And if the mind wanders, we're defeating the purpose, but we need to find ways to bring it back. 
And this will happen even in the one to 10, 10 to one. But the thing, the thing that I like about it is you're, you're counting from one to 10 and then you have to go back down from 10 to one. So you, every 10 seconds, you have to pay attention to having to make that switch and go back and forth, back and forth. So your mind can only wander for so long before you realize that, oh yeah, I'm, I'm not counting, you know, here. So it, it, it basically just slows up and interrupts the, 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 the mind wandering a lot quicker. So it, it allows you to spend more time in present moment as opposed to more time reining your mind in. So when you're doing this, the key is going to be to, to pay attention to the mind. And as it's, it, it's, it's counting and as it's wanting to drift, it's just simply about bringing it back gently and, and with compassion and without judgment and then continuing your counting. And then as you get better at that, you can start to you can start to slow it down. Slow down the process of of the counting and it allows you to to be a little bit more patient with your process, which being part of the present moment is all about patience. So if you're counting 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 9, 9 right and and it's just it's it's the way that the mind, the pace that the mind wants to be at but not the pace that the body wants to be at, which is what we need to start to get in touch with. The vibration and the frequency of the body is really where the present moment is 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 calling you back to, it's drawing you back to that. So the key is going to be to slow it down and then pay attention so it's like 1 and then the space between one and two, just feel that space, feel that space, see what that feels like. And then two to three, three to four, four to five, and then return back downward, right? And as you do this, you start to find a rhythm and a, and, and a nice flow, and it starts to calm the gentle, mental, the, the mental chatter of the mind, and it allows you to start to tune into the energy that that's there, right? It's just, it's not as loud as the mind. So we often, we, we often draw our attention to what is, is making more noise, which is the mental chatter of the mind. So as the mental chatter of the mind calms and, and silences, then you start to, you start to recognize the truth of your being, which is, is, is your present moment awareness. And it's a lot easier to start to bring that forth um, and start to develop that. So this has been a very effective strategy for me. So what I would recommend is just set your, your timer on your phone for five minutes, start out with five minutes. Um, two minutes, whatever, whatever feels right for you. And then just slowly start every week, add a minute or two to your timer and just get better at this. But this is the mistake people make. They do it for a couple days. They start to feel like, oh, this is good. This is making me feel good. I don't need to do it anymore. That's, that's the, the, the worst thing you can do because the mental chatter then starts to, to, to make, get noisy and noisier, noisier, and you return back to the same states that you were in. So this is going to be a daily practice and it's going to be something that you're going to have to do with consistency and you're going to notice that it's going to have a profound impact in your, in your life. And most people don't understand that this is present moment awareness. As you're counting, you're focusing your mind, you're taming your mind, you're keeping it in this area. How is that going to impact other areas of your life? Well, think about other areas of your life where you could benefit from having more present moment awareness, right? In meetings, when you're at, at, you know, reading, you know, it's funny when when people read books, more times where our mind is wandering and we've read a whole page and we don't even realize what we just read. And then we have to go back and reread it again, right? That's because we don't have control over our minds. Our minds have control over us. So you're going to notice that just this counting, simple counting, 1 to 10, 10 to 1, is going to completely have a profound impact, positive impact on your life, okay? So that's that's the basically the meat and potatoes of this talk but the the one thing that that I want to I want to point out to you guys is one of the biggest interrupters to the mind taking a, on a you know a life of its own and being so disturbing and and rampant and hyper um, and constant chatter is sugar okay most people don't realize this the impact that sugar has on our brain is very 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 powerful so if this is you and you're having a hard time settling your mind and you can't sleep at night, you have insomnia and you have all these things, sugar is going to be something you're going to want to eliminate from your diet. Refined and processed sugar. Start to look at alternatives. Look at look at sweeteners, natural sweeteners, um, things like stevia, you know, molasses, maple syrup, honey, things like that. Use those as your sweeteners and try your best to stay away from sugar because sugar will have an effect on your brain. It'll make it a lot harder for you to find stillness and find, find 
find that present moment awareness because your mind is almost like ADHD. It's just all over the place. It's running wild. It sees a squirrel. It goes off with that, right? That's, that's what we need to learn to tame. And sugar will be something that will go against your, your grain of trying to find present moment awareness. So hopefully that helps you guys. Um, give it a try and uh, let me know how.